In this video, I'm going to be talking about one of the very best projects we've ever done on our Forerunner, our dual battery system. Why is this so important to us? Because it powers our fridge and it's a game changer. Over the past few years, we've made some changes to it. Some to make it perform better, others to fix the mistakes we made when we first installed it. If you're planning on installing your own dual battery system or maybe you already have one, you'll likely benefit from the information I'm about to pass on to you. I put a link to the original install video at the end of this video. In this series of videos, we're going to be revisiting some of our past videos and doing updates and long-term honest reviews on much of the parts that we've installed on our vehicles and camping equipment we've been using. After using it or driving with it installed for, in many cases, years, would we still recommend it? Have we changed anything since we did the install? Has anything broke or worn out? Things we may have done wrong in the original video. What we like and what we don't like about it or what we've done. We'll keep these videos short, right to the point, and not pull any punches. Now, let's get started. What we like the most about it, despite the way it looks, and we'll get to that in a little bit, uh, it functions perfectly. We never have to worry about it working. Now the heart and soul of this whole system is the Red Arc DC to DC charger. And it's been working perfect. I was a little worried about mounting it under the hood in the high heat under here, but it's been in here for over three years and it still is perfect. Now we had to put the dual battery underneath the hood because we don't have room inside the cabin for it, or at least we didn't at the time. We like that it takes up this space that's normally empty right here. We have, I think it's a 70 or 75 amp hour battery, an Optima yellow top. And that's plenty of power for what we need. All we do is we power the fridge. Uh, we have a, a water pump in the jerry can, um, CPAP. I have a CPAP for at night and some camp lights. And e even after 14, 16 hours in camp, uh, from the time we get there at night to the time we leave in the morning, engine not running at all. We only use maybe, maybe 20% of the battery's capacity. So yeah, this is plenty of power for what we need. I met this guy earlier in the spring. He was on a journey from, from the very south of the United States up to Alaska, <coughs> excuse me. And his Jeep was packed and we got to talking about power supplies and he said he had two 100 amp hour lithium batteries in his vehicle and I, and I asked him, so what do you need all that power for? What, what's it gonna be powering? And he said, well, I've got an electric cooktop, I've got a toaster oven, I've got a coffee maker, even a food processor he was carrying around. This Jeep was packed full. I don't, it was way overweight. But anyways, more power to him. If he wants to cook uh, with all those appliances, that's awesome, but that's just not, the way we do it. We don't need all that power. We like the system that we chose because it's fairly simple. It looks complicated with all this maze of wires on here right now, but it's really quite simple, much, much more simple than uh, uh, a lot of other people that we know their systems they have. They have the big uh, inverters and and it's, it's just crazy what they, I don't even know what they power with this big converter thing, but we don't need that much, like I said. And this, we think that the simpler it is, fewer things that'll go wrong with it, uh, less expensive, less room it takes up. So we're really happy with the system we chose. Now what we don't like about it, um, one thing I really don't like about it right now is this rat's nest of wires that you see. It, it wasn't like this when we first installed it. We've been uh, adding things onto it. We brought uh, a solar, solar wires into the controller. Um, I have a uh, wires going to a plug right here. 
where I can plug in a trickle charger when the Forerunner is just sitting in the shop for a week or two. Keeps this battery nice and healthy. Um, we did change out um, this um, Victron gauge that shows us the, um, the status of the battery and all. And we also, if you've been watching our videos, you'll, you may remember, we tested out a lithium battery underneath the hood for a, a manufacturer of lithium batteries. We were concerned about the heat being generated underneath the hood would adversely affect that lithium battery. And it turns out it does. It, uh, it got so hot underneath here quite a few times that the, the battery stopped taking a charge from the DC-DC charger. And it does that to prevent it from overheating and catching on fire. So it's, it's really uh, a big safety issue for us. So some of the stuff underneath there, here's some really ratty, crappy insulation that we tried to keep, that we had in here around the lithium battery to try to keep it cooler, uh, away from the engine heat as much as we could. Uh, it worked to a point, but not, not good enough. When we did the test, we had uh, bunch of temperature sensors up against the battery in a lot of spots. Uh, here's one actually just sitting here. That was the, the under the hood temperature. And another thing with the lithium, the posts were opposite. So I had to really quick, we were kind of under the gun putting that lithium in here. So I had to reconfigure the wires and it's a mess. This winter I'm going to tear all this out, and redo it and make it look much nicer than it is right now, than it looks right now. Although we like the battery here in this spot, this spot does limit the size of the battery we can put in here. Uh, we can't really put a 100 amp hour battery, AGM battery in here because there just isn't enough room. Uh, not that we need it, but I mean, you always want more, right? Like I said earlier, there's a couple of things that we changed uh, since the original installation. One is the Victron gauge, uh, the one we had that uh, the people that we were working with to get the materials and the expertise on how to wire everything, they suggested a Vic the Victron gauge shunt that had an open circuit board and it shorted out right away with all the moisture and dirt underneath the hood here. I think it <coughs> Excuse me. I think it may have lasted a year, uh, but this one here, um, it's pretty much identical, but it has a closed circuit board. So it's um, waterproof or water resistant anyways. And it's been in here for a couple of years and still working perfect. Another thing that we had to change and I knew better as soon as we started it, but they insisted on this, uh, the people we were working with, they insisted on putting the the breaker between the charger and the starter battery right here. Now I knew better. I knew it should have went over by the starter battery. You always want to have a breaker or fuse as close to the power source as possible. Um, so I did change that. I did put a breaker over there probably a few months in because I knew better. Um, yeah, they, they gave us quite a few little tidbits of bad advice, I'm afraid. Another thing I did wrong is when I wired up this shunt, this monitor shunt, I didn't realize that on this side, all you want hooked up on this one side is just the battery cable going to the negative terminal. All the other grounds go on the other side. I didn't have, <coughs> I didn't have it that way at first, and so the monitoring system didn't work right from the very beginning and I, I couldn't figure it out, couldn't figure it out. And then one of our viewers noticed what I did, got a hold of us, told, told me that, hey, you know, you, you only want the one cable on the one side going to the terminal and did that, fixed my problem. So thank you for pointing that out to me. Other improvements I'm going to be making when I do have this out is I'm going to make a heat shield to, uh, to separate the battery from the hot exhaust right here, just to keep the battery a little bit cooler. And again, I'm gonna organize the wires much better. And this platform on top, this black uh, ABS plastic that I have everything mounted on, I'm gonna make it a little larger so I can organize those wires better. And that's about it. Like I said, the thing 
works perfect, so I don't want to mess with it too much. Uh, but I do see those little improvements that we do need to make. An option we have is this winter we may do away with the battery underneath the hood and actually go with a lithium inside the cabin. And to do that, we'll be using this storage. This goes in the back passenger side, uh, fits down in that uh, unused area right next to the side perfectly. This is going into production uh, as we speak. So we may be utilizing this to house the battery and the charger and everything else all the way in the back. Stay tuned for that. That would be a very exciting project for us. So there you go, that's the update on our dual battery system. Over the next few months, we'll be putting out hopefully a video a week on just doing simple updates like this after a long-term use of what we've installed or uh, camping equipment we're using. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing to our channel and please hit that like button if you like this video.